What is up, everybody? This is Parametric Philosophy. I'm Parametric Phil, and you're watching episode one of Rhino Fundamentals. Now, this is the deal. Uh, if you're new here, um, I am not. Uh, I'm not trying to make a typical tutorial series because I'm not formally trained in any of this software. I'm just trying to share my deep passion for uh, for different areas of design, modeling, and specifically uh, my passion for parametric design, but I've always been very, very meticulous about my approach to setting up systems and, and figuring out all the little details of the software that, that are necessary to operate as efficiently as possible. So I'm just trying to share every everything that I've learned about working efficiently so that all you beautiful designers can, you know, keep, keep executing your vision as best as you can, because I know that um, a lot of the time the software is the limiting factor in executing uh, your your design visions in order for us to get into really interesting complex grasshopper projects that I uh, want to get to eventually it's really important for me to lay out the foundations of of grasshopper modeling which is really just starts in Rhino and I'm gonna start from the very very you know from ground zero in Rhino uh, I'm not gonna go too in depth into you know an introduction but I'm gonna lay out generally my my general framework about how I approach Rhino modeling, and uh, you know that can lead us eventually into uh, uh, into Grasshopper, and then into a deep dive into Grasshopper. Okay, so this is how the series is going to work. Part one, I'm going to introduce you to the interface and calling up uh, a certain commands. Okay. Part two, we're going to uh, I'm going to introduce you to different types of geometries. Uh, part three, four, and five, we're going to create geometry, modify, and we're going to be transforming geometry. And then in part six, um, we're just going to go through general troubleshooting of, of certain modeling problems that might come up, and they will come up, And there's, but there's, I, I guarantee you will have modeling issues that are confusing, but there's certain strategies that we can use um, to, to help us figure out what those problems are as quickly as possible so that we can move on and keep designing. Okay, enough talking. Let's jump into Rhino and uh, start, you know, figuring out some of the fundamentals of how, how the software works. Oh, did I leave this open? I mean, wait. I think I'm getting hacked or something. Sometimes the software freezes up. <laughs> this is not. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I don't. I don't know who Phil is. Uh, <clears throat> Anyways, uh, let's open up a different file. All right, so we're gonna start by just talking about the general, um, the general layout of the different panels in Rhino. And there's a lot of different ways that you can set it up. And over time, you might want to customize how you set up your panels. Uh, but I'm gonna run you through quickly uh, how my panels are set up and why I have it set up that way. Okay, so the first thing that we want to look at here, this is the most important thing probably, is the command line. And that in the command line, that's where we can put in different commands um, depending on what we're trying to do, um, whether we're trying to create geometry. And and then when we when we when we make uh, when we execute commands, the command history will tell us what just happened, um, you know, and it will record it line by line. So sometimes. Uh, if we need to measure a distance, uh, it will tell us the result of that measurement in the command history. Okay, so commands are really the most important thing um, that we're going to be using in Rhino because that's really what makes everything actually happen. And uh, it's important. And there's four different ways that we can pull up commands, um, and it's important to understand the difference between these four different uh, strategies. And uh, because it, it, it will really change how, how efficiently you're able to operate in the software. You need to know when to use each of these strategies. So the most efficient way to pull up commands is, is using hotkeys. And uh, I, have a, uh, I have a full separate video going over hotkeys. Um, and I try to use hotkeys as much as possible. Um, and then the next method, uh, the next most efficient method typically is the command line here where we can search things up. And with the command line, it's pretty intelligent. So if you don't know exactly what you're searching, 
Um, it will usually be able to find it even if you're not typing in exactly what it is. Uh, also, you might be able to search something that you've never even used before and you might find what you're looking for. So the command line is a useful tool. Um, and then uh, if you don't have any idea what it's called, um, you can use the icons and you may find uh, some of the, the basic tools on the sidebar here. And with any, with any, with some of, some of these icons, like the line, the polyline icon, for example, you can go to this little thing and it has a lot more, uh, you know, it's like a subgroup of different polyline commands. So that's super useful uh, for finding specific polyline um, functions. And if it's not in this panel, you might be able to find it in here. So because they're, they're divided up so well into subgroups, if you know, for example, you want to find a command for making a transformation, you can go to the transform tab and you might find the component, the command you're looking for in this group. Um, and then if, if all else fails, you may also be able to find your command by going through these lists um, in, the, in the Windows tabs. So just a quick note on hotkeys. Hotkeys, if you're not familiar, um, you can set up hotkeys. Uh, there are some default hotkeys, but you can set up hotkeys if you go to document properties and then you go to keyboard and you can basically assign keyboard combinations to any command that you want. And so I've set up a bunch of these. And like I said, I have a whole other video just on hotkeys. It's something that uh, I'm pretty aggressive with uh, making sure to implement as much as possible. Um, and uh, so now, now that all, all these hotkeys are set up, I just have to do these. If I can remember these keyboard uh, combos, then I can access the commands way quicker than any other method that there is. So obviously I'm gonna put all the common, uh, the most common commands that I use in there. So for you, um, make sure that at some point, if you're, if you're typing in a command over and over again, consider putting it into uh, a command macro. Um, so I, so, you know, ideally, uh, we would put all our commands into hotkeys. The limiting factor is that we just don't have enough keyboard combinations uh, that are easily accessible to our hand to make that an efficient strategy, but we'll put as many in as we can. And so that's the basics of how to pull up uh, commands. And we're definitely gonna be touching on that topic in all the future videos. So over here, uh, I have my, th this is often customized. Everyone usually has this area set up differently but I like to put my properties over here and properties are gonna show you general viewport camera uh, properties and wallpaper properties. But when you select an object, now it's showing the object properties, okay? So that's important. These are general properties and when something's selected, it's showing the object properties, okay? In here, we can change our camera information to change you know, what the, what the, what the lens, length, lens length looks like or we can change the location of the camera, stuff like that. And then when an object is selected, we can choose what layer it's on. We can choose how it's being displayed, different rendering settings, um, fun stuff like that. I like to have my layers panel always open and I like to have these side by side because I use them both very frequently. In our layers panel, we can put different uh, objects into each layer and we can it helps us organize different components in our model because as you can see a lot because of the the light bulb right the light bulb is off a lot of these components are hidden because i i only want to be i want to be able to focus on very specific parts of the model at each time and i want to choose when i can see them and when i cannot see them uh, organizing layers is also really important if you're going to be making uh, drawings because it will help you organize your line weights uh, another tab that you might want to access uh, frequently, somewhat frequently, is the display tab. And in there you can choose uh, what, what kind of edges are being displayed. And um, it'll help you with visibility, especially in complex models. Um, and this will change depending on what view setting you, you have set to. And what I'm talking about, if you go to view, you can change the, uh, the style of view to several different rendering styles. I usually use Ghosted when I'm modeling and I'll switch to rendered view 
uh, if I'm trying to make trying to get a better visualization. Down here, this isn't used. Um, a lot of people don't have this open all the time, but I found it really useful. It's a it's the um, this is a, an object filter a selection filter. If I only have one uh, type of geometry uh, checked off, then it will only be able to select that one type of geometry. It's super useful when you have a whole bunch of curves and uh, solids in one space, for example. And down here, I almost never touch these. I just set them up the way that I want them set up, and then uh, and then I pretty much never touch them again. Um, but that might be different depending on what you're working on. So grid snap is basically just going to um, it's going to uh, uh, your cursor will snap to whichever whatever type of grid you have set up. Um, ortho is is when you have ortho on, uh, your mouse will only move uh, freely in in the four uh, different uh, uh, different uh, directions. And unless I hold shift and now it's free form, it will it will move in any direction. Okay. So when ortho is selected, it only moves in x and y in the x and y axes unless I hold shift. But if ortho is not if ortho is not selected uh, now it's free form until I hold shift so it's just it's just the inverse you have to decide whether what works best for you I like having ortho on um, and uh, th that's you know that's the main one object snap is also the other the other main uh, thing to consider with object snap off we don't snap onto any points and if we turn object snap on now we snap to uh, all these different points and we can choose what points we're snapping to based on these check boxes right here okay if I want to snap onto a midpoint I have to make sure that midpoint object snap is selected and now it will right here mid now it can let me snap onto midpoints okay if I don't have near selected it won't let me uh, snap onto it won't let me snap onto uh, just any 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 part of the any part of the line. But if I have near selected, I can snap to any part of that line. So it's a useful function. But if you're focused on if you know you're going to be snapping to endpoints and midpoints, you might as well turn near off temporarily. It might make it easier for you to uh, do your modeling. Okay, and while we're talking about object snaps, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Not many people know about this. Uh, if you can remember this, it's gonna be it's gonna make your modeling way more efficient when, especially when you have a lot of objects going on. Okay, this is the deal. Uh, we we all know that if we click a check a checkbox with the normal left click, it will turn it off and turn it on. That makes sense. But with every checkbox, including the selection filter, if we left click it, it will only leave that one on. And and this is super important because I'll show you why. I'll show you why this is so important. If I need to move this from the center point. Um, look, I'm trying to find the center point. There's just too many things that it's snapping onto. There's a whole bunch of lines behind it. It's too complicated. Um, the easiest way to do this now is if I uh, right click on center. Now only center is on. And there's only a few centers that it will snap to now. Boom, it's as simple as that. Okay, but here's the deal. We don't we haven't lost all our settings here. Okay? Left click it again, right click it again, all your other panels turn back on. Okay? And this is gonna be super important also for our selection filter because we can do the same thing. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, just a few tips about how to help navigating the actual Rhino space um, with uh, you know different visibility controls. So um, you know I think you've probably figured out how to zoom, pan, shift, um, and uh, orbit. I'm not going to go into that, but here's a few tricks. You know, if you have a whole bunch of objects, um, if you're working on some big project and you have a whole bunch of objects, um, it might get uh, might get kind of confusing how to navigate in that space. Okay, so as you can see, the orbit starts to become um, we start to lose control of the orbit. Let's say we want to focus on this object. It won't automatically orbit around that object. It will at some point, 
um, there's a few ways we can get around that. Here's one way we can either uh, zoom in like this and now it will it will be focused on the object that we zoomed in on. Okay, we can also select an object. We can go to zoom selected. It will zoom right in. The object, the, the uh, what I like to use the most though is uh, I select an object and then I have this hotkey um, attached to move target to objects right here and it won't change the zoom factor but it will change the target of the camera so that's the function that I like to use the most because I usually don't want to change the zoom factor okay so that's just a little trick um, about how to operate in the um, Rhino viewport a little bit better zoom extents will also if you have all your objects selected zoom extents will uh, zoom into uh, uh, only to the extents of all the objects that you've selected. Okay, so there's a lot of other functions uh, like that, but those are the main ones. Those, those are the ones that I want you to know when we're just kind of getting into this because I don't want you to get frustrated when you're just trying to navigate the viewport. Okay, so that's the basics of, you know, the whole interface. I think we covered a lot of really good stuff in this, in this video, um, but we're just scratching the surface. There's so much more that we have to get into. Um, and you know, in the next video, we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to be talking about how to create geometry. So we're going to get into the Cartesian plane system. That's how we actually operate in the x and y and z coordinate system. And we're going to be getting into different types of geometry. And uh, so that's curves and surfaces and solids. And that's actually how we build the models that we that we're that we're trying to that we're trying to build. And then you know, in the next video, or the next few videos, we're going to get into transforming the geometry that's moving it and arraying, arraying, copying. So I'm really excited to be bringing you guys this content. This is super fun. And remember, design your approach and then approach your design. Out.